All right, so virtual hosts is a way to show and to host multiple sites on the same IP address. Great. So if we have multiple websites, and let's say that we do not plan on using any server-side includes, no PHP, no Perl, no magic of server-side uh, type, we have just flat index, uh, flat HTML pages or flat images, and we would like to make sure that when you ask for yahoo.com, that that website comes up, or when you ask for google.com, that another website comes along. Okay. So what we have here is a directory then. In this directory, maybe under home, home, Nopix. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just do it instead of the computer. So in this instance, under, under home, Nopix, we have one directory. And this directory will be called Yahoo, okay? And another directory called Google. So now I have two directories where I'll store my websites. Now the great thing is that now I can give my developer access to the Google website, but not the Yahoo website. Even better, I can invite someone to say, hey, would you like to have a website? I can sell you this hosting space, and you're going to you know, store five megabytes of web pages, and I'll charge you 20 bucks a month. And what a great business to run. You, know, you probably know a number of uh, websites that uh, basically make great money doing just that. So what they do uh, in the hosting companies is they automate the process from when you say, this is my username, this is my credit card number. They create automatically the user for you. They create the directory for you, which happens to be the document root for the virtual host. Then they might even install already software for you. Uh, there's the cPanel and some other automation systems that allow you to log in through a web application to manage your system, right? Uh, and there are still some people that prefer the SSH access and say, just give me access to my directory and I'll work with that. This is called shared, shared uh, hosting. What do you think would be the downside of shared hosting? Any downsides? Other the price is great because they'll put you know hundreds of people <laughs> per Slow. box. Slow. Okay. Okay. Performance could be a, a trouble because if I am not an expert, but I have five dollars or ten dollars, <laughs> I can get a website right next to yours, and I'm going to write PHP loops that are going to lock the server you know tight. What else? If, if performance, what else? Yes. Yes. So upgrades are going to be slow. Number one, you didn't pay for upgrades. <laughs> they already got you where they want you because you're putting your files. Two, if they upgrade PHP, some people may, it may break their scripts. So typically, uh, vulnerabilities grow with time, and your needs may outgrow this shared environment. Yes. What, what else could be a trouble with shared environments? Hackers, well, you know, in general, uh, the exposure to hackers is, is similar. Now, we, we don't know how they're going to set up the firewall. You know, uh, it's their business, though. So someone hacking in, actually, would endanger the $5 they're, they're getting from you. What other security risks do you think exist in the shared environment? Right. Now, in general, this should not be the case because... It's a different user owning each directory. But here's the thing. Apache is running as a specific user. And that Apache user needs to have access to both, which means that if you write a PHP script that looks in their directory, it might be allowed to do that. OK? There seems to be an exposure where you just do browse to CD, or browse to dot dot backslash back. So you go up and then back down yeah, but but uh, uh, basically uh, today when they are set up, you know we are running we are running our system as user Nopix, and when we create new files, we are the owner of the file. So on those shared environments today, when you go out to say slash home, you can list all the directories, but you can't actually traverse them. You can't go in them to see files. 
again, it is still possible for, and it's necessary for Apache to do that because the Apache needs to see your files and someone else's files. Exactly, and there is a PHP function called system, and inside of that you just start putting um, uh, Unix commands. There is, in PHP, a setting where you say, run it in safe mode, and then it's going to try to uh, limit some of those commands that go into system and you can't execute some functions. The bottom line, though, is that for a hacker to get into a new system, uh, that's a challenge, okay? To elevate your current authorization on a shared system, it's much, much easier. Which is why I read a study where it said 70% uh, of all, you know, uh, hacking uh, uh, problems are, are jobs that are internal, right? Someone is basically doing something that's supposed to be, but elevating the rights. So shared environments, today we know that they are a security risk, they may be performance risk. <coughs> but they're so cheap <laughs> that they'll be, you know, a great business for a long time. Okay, so, therefore we have the need for, uh, for hosting. So, the first step to have uh, a successful virtual host is to have DNS properly configured. Now, DNS, and I can never remember what it stands for, uh, 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 the dynamic name services or... Um, I think I'm pretty close with it. Domain name? I tell you what, it's either domain name services or DNS. Um, domain name system. All right, close. <laughs> so all it means is that when you type in a URL in the browser, it goes to a database. And the database changes the name to a number. And then that gets put into the HTTP header. The name you typed in also is put in the HTTP header. And that's part of the 1.1 one that one, um, definition. But on our system, you see, we, we don't have control over the DNS server. If I was to say, show me what's inside of uh, the resolve file, this is our DNS server. Okay? On the virtual machine, the DNS server is your host system, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a local address. If I am on my Windows system, right, I can, I can go here, command, IP config. On this system, let's see, uh, show DNS. Oh, is it, does it show here? Default, I, I can't see it. Uh, default gateway? No, sorry. Um, <laughs> local IP4 address. Uh, no, so these are all definitions. None of those are DNS servers. These are all definitions for the local IPs uh, that are defined. Uh, it, it, it is, but... Um, Basically, the way VMware works is you make the DNS requests to the host, and then the host will use its own DNS server. Uh, there, there's a setting, uh, show all, uh, or sh um, maybe slash all. Uh, uh, there is DHCP, okay, let's see, host, DHCP, DNS servers, there we go. Okay, so the DNS servers here, uh, there's a number of them. You can have primary, secondary, tertiary. And the idea is that if, uh, if one shuts down, then you just go to the next one. So those are DNS servers, and, and honestly, uh, we just don't have control over them. Right? They don't like us messing with it, because if you, uh, if you break the DNS server, then, then um, all the systems that have been configured to ask for information from them are going to suffer in some way. So, on most systems, there's a way to fake a DNS uh, response. And that's done through a file called hosts. <coughs> there's a file on the, on the um, Windows system, under Windows, system uh, 32, 
uh, drivers, etc, and there it is, hosts. If you open this file uh, with a notepad, uh, that's what it looks like. Now, you might be, uh, you know, uh, surprised by seeing etc directory under Windows, but uh, that uh, matches the Unix uh, directory name. So, etc hosts, and if you are uh, running as administrator, you can modify this file. If you're not administrator, limited user, then you cannot modify it, which is great, because many viruses would enter their own DNS resolutions here. And they will say something like 192.168.1.2, google.com. And when you type in google.com, you go to their website. And their website might look like Google until you start typing in search or keywords, and then you can't figure out what's wrong with your Google system, all right? Um, so, uh, so faking these uh, DNS names is, is one way that um, hackers can control where your internet goes, basically. So let's see how we can modify this inside of our system where we do have uh, super user privileges. Okay, to be super user, to do things that are system level on our NAPIC system, you have to issue a specific command and that is su space dash. On most other Unix systems, you'll be asked for a password. It'll say, if you want to be a root user, prove to me that you have th that uh, authentication. And on, on, on Napix, it does not ask you for the root user because this is a CD booted system. All right, so it just says, oh, you'd like to be administrator, no problem. Uh, it's a limited risk because Napix doesn't live very long on the system and you've, you already have access to the desktop, so that's why they allow you to do that. So I have to log in as root, perfect. Now I need to edit a file. If you in the past chose to edit files with leap, uh, leap, leafpad, you can type in leafpad and then Etsy hosts, okay? Uh, uh, let's see how come that didn't work. Um, I'm sure there's a good explanation why that didn't work. Um, yeah, yeah. The, so, so the display variable. Um, it is, and 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 it should. Um, let's tr let, let 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 me try this. Export display equals localhost. Yeah. Yeah, so I, but I, for those who uh, are unable to, so, okay, those who, uh, who cannot um, use VI, just go ahead and use Nano here, and, and you can edit it this way. It'll take me a little bit, I'll, f I'll figure out how, how the leaf pad, how we can show the GUI in leaf pad. Um, for now, you can use Nano, uh, and if you don't want to use Nano, you can use VI. But basically, here's where we need to create new names for our, uh, for our host. So, first we start with an IP address. And even though each one of your virtual machines has its own IP address, since we're running local Apache, you can just put this uh, home local loopback as the address. And then let's go ahead and create google.com. And, and yahoo.com, and maybe www.google.com as well as www.yahoo.com. Okay, and so Control X will save it. Now, I'm going to open a, a second terminal so that I turn on my Apache system. How can we verify that Apache is running? Do you remember from the lab? How can we verify that Apache is running? Okay, so that's one way to do that. I could I could go to um, to the browser and I can say localhost, and then um, you know just try to browse to it, which which happens to work. Yeah, uh, but but maybe maybe I, I I don't have my ports right, so that doesn't prove that Apache isn't running. So how can you check that Apache is running at the command line? Yeah. 
Yeah, HTTPD, yeah. So PS-EF shows you all the processes that are running on the system. And then when you pipe it to grep, which is the filtering command, and then you search for HTTPD inside of the display, it'll show you all the processes that are called HTTPD, which is Apache, okay? But how can we find out the port that Apache is running on? We can always go to the config file, right? <laughs> how can we find it with the, with the, with the operating system? That was, that's in the, by the way, it's in, the, uh, in our lab. There was a command called netstat, netstat, which works on Windows as well. And you say netstat-a to see what are all the ports that are currently open on your operating system. The AL is for ports that are listening. Listening, so what uh, are the listening ports on my system? P stands for programs. So show me the program that's associated with that port. Finally, N is for the numerical port and not resolved to a name of a service. So when I run it, I have a whole bunch of, <clears throat> a whole bunch of ports. So the easiest thing to do it now is to say, go ahead and, and find HTTPD. And when you do that, then the great thing about it is it tells you exactly what port HTTPD is, is listing on. So 8080 is, is what we're listing on here. Perfect, and that's the process ID for, for Apache. All right, um, so that's how we know it's running. So now, see what happens when I type in www.yahoo.com. Right? Nothing is happening. Why? But I'm running a website locally. Exactly, exactly. So I just have to change it to the right port. But basically, now when you go to www.yahoo.com, something completely different is coming up. And when I go to google.com, and if I was listening on port 80, you know, I wouldn't have to have. 8080 afterwards, uh, but I do this, and, uh, and, and this stuff is coming up. When we get to the subject, when we talk about proxies, there's a forward proxy that allows you to share internet with other browsers, but the reverse proxy allows you to grab data from another website behind the scenes and display it on your website, so you become a forward from another website. So we will be able actually to grab Google and show it as, as if it was our own website. All right. What's that? Kind of like Bing. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't know what they do on the back end. Right, right, right. But um, it's useful. See, the reverse proxies are very useful when you have a farm of servers and you try to create a, a load balancer for all of them. And then individually pull from them, expose it through a single IP address. All right, so here's our new website, Google. All right? And so if this ever appears on their website, there's going to be a lot of phone calls to, <laughs> to, to, to support desks. Okay, so from here, you see we are done with the first part, and that is with configuring the, the htdocs uh, file. I'm sorry, we, uh, configuring the hosts file. Another way to test it is to say ping www.yahoo.com. And when you issue it on your system, it better not have this 127 response, right? So we are now um, faking uh, yahoo.com. <coughs> okay, so the next part is finding the correct directives to make happen whatever it is that we're trying to do. Okay, For these directives to have some kind of a reasonable effect, we need to put some web pages inside of Google and inside of Yahoo. Okay. Uh, what better way to create a web pages but to copy them from someone else? And so what we will do, what we will do is we are going to uh, say wget on uh, Microsoft.com. And so we're pulling the home page for, for Microsoft.com. It's called now default.aspx. I'm just going to rename it to, uh, to be index.html. Um, dex.html and I can go inside of my file system and I can preview this page uh, I can preview this page I can say uh, go to Yahoo oops what was the other one 
go to Google and look at this page. And so this, will, this is what I have as an index at HTML. All right, all these pictures are, are um, absolute paths. So if that ever happens, when Google comes up with this website, then we're in trouble. Um, although there was time when Microsoft was thinking about buying all kinds of companies. Uh, okay, next let's, let's get Yahoo. What, who do you think Yahoo dislikes the most? If I was to download a web page to be our new Yahoo website, who do they dislike the most, do you think? Google. Google. <laughs> okay, now that's tricky, okay, because what I have to figure out now is what is the IP address to Google so that I can put, because my Google.com doesn't work anymore, you see? So I'm going to say, go ahead and show me where, where does the Google website actually live? And it lives at this IP address. So even though I manipulated my DNS, I can go back to the Google web to the Google website by going to 125.255.144. Whoops, who knows what, what, what the other IP was? Uh, so I run this and I go to Google because I'm now smarter than DNS servers, right? I, I know the IP address. So I just take this and I go to my Yahoo page and I go ahead and say. Go ahead and download whatever is here. And now the index page inside of Google is, whoops. Okay, what did I do? Oh, uh, we were inside of Yahoo. Did I reload it incorrectly? Let's see. I want it to be, no, no. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I got it wrong. I, I need to be in Yahoo. Go here, and there is Google. Now the pretty picture is gone. I, I I'm not. Huh. Okay, here's here's a 101 of uh, of HTML. All right, this uh, this is free. Here's what you do. You say um, base URL equals no base href equals this. Okay, and so what this tag does in HTML is it um, sets all the uh, relative references to include this as the core. So my, my hunch is that if I go and, and um, on my local website here, refresh it, and my, all my pictures come up. Yes, okay. Uh, I don't think I break any copyrights. I think there's a there's a clause in copyright for academic purposes. We have a little leeway. Um, <laughs> stu no, not students. No, just just faculty. <laughs> well, we're advertising all these companies. You know, it's it's good. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Okay, so so this works nicely. The base tag. So now I have two websites in two different directories, in Google and in Apache. One thing that's important for me to know is what is the security set on these web, on these directories? So the security right now is set for Napix user to be the owner to have read, write, and execute on these directories, okay? That is very important because, again, in the shared environment, it's important that the process that's running Apache has access to these directories, okay? So from here, we, we will start editing our config file. And by the way, now if you want to use the leafpad and then you go to uh, home, Nopix, uh, let's see, home, Nopix. Did I tell you about the uh, uh, SSH completion mechanism? So instead of typing all these commands, type in the beginning of what you expect to be and then press the tab key. One press of the tab key and the rest of home is filled out. It gives, there's two things, less typing and you're more accurate because you're not making as many as syntax errors. Next, I type in KN, tab, and it fills in the rest. Then I type in AP, it fills out the rest. CO fills out the rest. And then, right, it ensures that you are doing the right thing. So now I have certain certain amount of confidence that the file will come up. 
So that's how, how you would do that with LeafPad. I'll, I'll be in VI for, for this. Virtual hosts are at the very bottom of our file. They are all commented out. Name virtual host. There are two kinds of virtual host that, that Apache will uh, support. The less common one is the IP virtual host, which allows you to have multiple IP addresses and then take you to a different website depending on which IP address you've used. It's, it's great technology, only we don't have enough IP addresses, so the chances of you know, doing that are small. Plus, you can also always say you, you, can have multiple, um, you can have multiple copies of Apache installed, and then you can say, listen, on that IP address, so you can have multiple instances of Apache running, so you don't really need virtual hosting for that. But when you have multiple websites and only one IP address, then you listen on port 80, and you have to have some technology behind it to make it happen. So name virtual hosting is, is a, by far the most popular virtual host. You have to uncomment this line, this directive, for virtual host to, to actually be active. Next, make sure to put the port number that you're listening on. Star simply means any IP address that you're listening on. It's going to go th through all the config, and then it reaches name virtual host, and it says, okay, first of all, we're going to uh, reconsider document root that was set before. That document root is no longer uh, important because we're, we will look at the website and we'll try to find the matching virtual host. And if it does not find any matches, it does not go back to the document root in the general section. It, in fact, does something that's not as intuitive, but it goes to the first virtual host that was defined. Now, from my coding experience, the else is always at the bottom. Right? So I sort of would like it to, to choose the virtual host that's at the bottom, but it goes back to the very first one uh, defined as the default one. So if it, doesn't, if it doesn't match any of them. So the virtual host section basically starts again with specifying which virtual host uh, IP we are looking at. So you can listen on multiple IPs, and you can say on this IP I have the, this set of virtual hosts, on another IP, I have this set of virtual hosts. Very, very flexible. Server admin, okay? So if someone already paid however much money for their hosting, we'll let them have their, their email address on the website. When, when there are errors, have their users send emails to their account, right? So that's sort of the best way to do that. Next, the document route, okay? Yahoo will be the first website that we deal with. Home. Napix, uh, Yahoo. All right, so this is going to be, and in, in, um, you know I have to undo that because it's the reason why I, 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 I why I un, un, undid it, why why, <clears throat> why I put it back is because I couldn't remember what if there was a slash at the end uh, in these directives putting a slash at the end of the directive or not having it there makes a big difference. So, so there isn't any slash, so, so we'll, we'll, I can say R for redo, no. Uh, <laughs> I already made a, another change there, and so I forked the change history. So uh, home, Napix, and then Yahoo, like this, without the, without the slash. Next, server name. And so here, um, we can put whatever whatever the core server name should be. So when relative links are generated, see what should be matched as, uh, to, to complete the absolute path, what should be the main name of, of the server. Document root and server name. And also the server name in virtual hosts acts as the main index that Apache is looking for. So when you typed in www.yahoo.com, the way this is going to be executed, this section of, of virtual host configuration, is it'll match the server name. Okay, so the server name has to match the document root. So next, I will actually skip the error log and custom log because this allows me to create a unique log file for my hosts for the, all those different uh, accounts. 
But if I want to have all my logs in one place, then I just don't de redefine them. And so having, you know, uh, if you have multiple, uh, you are, uh, multiple domains like this, maybe there's a reason why you want to have a single log file for all the requests. Uh, it, it might be uh, it might be a challenge, but a lot of times there is uh, there is an entry there in the log file for uh, for which website uh, the request was made. We'll, we'll look at it. Honestly, I don't remember, but but yeah, that's a good point. Yes. No, you, you have to create a new instance. So I would paste that in, and now I, I, I would say same definition, but just yahoo.com. Because no, and unfortunately, even in the DNS server, not specifying the name of the host, it's, it's a hack. Like being able to say star.yahoo.com and go to this uh, IP, that's a hack. And, and, and it's used by everybody, of course, you know, but. Um, the core definition for the DNS servers, when you type in yahoo.com, it should not route anywhere because, uh, because you need to specify uh, a host first. Okay, so with this in place, whoops, I just broke a few things here. Virtual, virtual host. With this in place, I'm going to run a test. That's another principle from configuring services, make small changes and test them as you go whenever you have a chance. Because you, you put together a hundred lines of configuration and then nothing works, right? And then you have to undo, undo, undo until. So this way we save a little time. We'll save the file. Actually, I'll keep it open. I'll keep it open and um, maybe I'll, I'll open a new tab where we'll be restarting the server. So we'll say something like Apache bin Apache CTL restart. Okay, perfect. So the server is restarted. And now, when I type in um, my Yahoo, whoops, and some old stuff here. Uh, close that. There's Google. So let's go right here. Uh, www.yahoo.com. Well, of course, it's not working as expected. Oh, there it is. So on our NAPIC systems, this uh, ICE weasel caches everything, okay? So make sure that when you practice these virtual hosts, you press F5 to refresh, or you have to restart the browser, okay? But basically, now, when I go to yahoo.com, I end up getting this, this website. And this website is not in HDDocs. This website is somewhere else on the file system. Uh, if we were to uh, quickly peek at the uh, log file, so uh, we could do uh, tail f on um, Apache logs access log file. Yeah, so unfortunately, it does not tell us anything about which um, a virtual host is, is being accessed. See, if I, if I uh, move it here and press refresh, it logs, but it doesn't tell us which, which website was hit. So putting into a unique log file name, great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so <clears throat> so that, that works for, um, for this virtual host. And um, the other ones are just a matter of, of, of copying th this configuration. Now let me uh, show this example as well. At this point, if I go to Yahoo, if I go to Google and I refresh, notice that Google shows. Because again, the default, if nothing else is matched, if, if nothing uh, is matched as far as the name of the website, right, and we do not have a virtual host called google.com, then it's going to take the first definition from the top. Yeah. And, 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 and we should be able to take Yahoo here and refresh it a few times, and, and that works as well. Yeah. So in a way, what you asked, Jason, was, you know, <laughs> If I define www.yahoo first, I could have skipped my yahoo.com because I would have been okay with, with uh, the default match being www.yahoo.com. But that was just a um, coincidence for that config. 
So now if I was to, uh, to go with uh, Google, I'm sure there's a VI command here to uh, do a, an S on um, replacement on... Um, well, you, you can actually do... Uh, I said, but I didn't know my line numbers. Oh, there are line numbers right here at the bottom. But sometimes I find that it's just typing is just as fast. Yeah. Okay, so here's our Google website now. Okay, and we save that. And we come up here and we say restart. And we can uh, see the log. So um, Yahoo is still working. And now when we go to Google, we get our, our Microsoft page. And unfortunately, you know, there's no difference in terms of the, <laughs> the reporting of which website goes. But that's how that works. And, and I can go cut the Google part. And it's the same host and, and different, uh, different websites. Yes? Sure, sure. Very good question. So, so if I go here, I can, I can, first of all, I can just say, show me the, 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 the information without any ending. And so here uh, we see, um, uh, right here, you can do start, restart, graceful, or stop. Oh, it doesn't say that, does it? Um, it's, yeah, yeah, so dash T. But there is a, there's an entire expression for, so it says syntax OK right here. Uh, uh, check config, uh, test config. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, now how did that happen? I. Oh yeah, huh. Look, look, look how great this, this, this worked. I thought I was going to trick it, and I, so I typed it into my own website. But then when I hit search, it still resolves to Google. So uh, now here is a business model. I have to go to Bing because I broke the other two. Uh, OK, so um, Apache CTL, it's either test config or check config. I, I remember that much. Um, config test. Oh, thank you. <laughs> config test. <laughs> Uh, config test, all right. Which works the same as dash t, by the way. Yeah. But this is very useful command because oftentimes you, you're making a small change, but you, 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 you forgot maybe a letter. And so before you do the restart and you find out that, you, that the shutdown works, but the startup doesn't work, right? You do the config test. That's, that's a live server. Yeah, on a live server, you get a. You, you develop an emotional disease, you know, where you're, so anyway. <laughs> it can be ner nerve wracking, I agree. All right. Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and do what, um, what Steven suggested because it, it, it does make uh, good sense. We're going to set error log and custom log for our websites in such a way that. Um, the error log will say uh, Google, and uh, and the access log will say Google in the appropriate space, and this one will say. See now, I I do want those two to go to the same one because they're really the same website, so so I have the flexibility to do to do that, and that's perfect, and uh, and then these. Actually, I forgot what I can do. Huh. Yeah, well, uh, I just deleted those. I'm going to fix them here and then copy them the other, the other place. So there's a Yahoo one, and a Yahoo one, and then I yank two lines, and I come down here and I say, like this, and now, Restart, and now as I click on or refresh this page, or I go back here and I refresh this page, see I should be able to go to 
my logs, so CD Apache log files, and there's a whole set of new log files. Error log files are empty, which is very good, 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 uh, good thing. And now, in the Yahoo access log, I have all the IP addresses that would have, and this is all me local here. But um, if I if I set this to not NAT, but let's see what I have it set to. I have NAT. Um, if this was bridged, then you could actually, you know, visit the page, and we would see different IP addresses here. Um, there is a um, system called Webalizer that allows you to create graphs out of these log files, and so then per website you could see how many hits per month and so forth. All right, any questions? Okay, so this is this is how Apache works. It's very simple. Okay, really at the core, it's very simple, and. Um, oh, I guess now would be a good good time uh, to show how if I just say localhost, right, and we and we refresh this, see how it's the first configuration that, that it takes. We never define virtual host for localhost. So it basically goes in uh, the config file, uh, which we have right here. And um, since we used localhost, it's, it's not any of the server names. It basically goes to the first virtual host config. So, 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 so you could. So let's say that if that, that I took my if, if my first definition server name. This is default. Okay, so so we know that this is not going to happen. It's not going to get in the way of our other config. And then um, maybe we say, okay, well, make sure to go to um, home Nopix patch ht docs, which is where the other website is, and um, you know skip these two definitions so that the access log and error log are used. We can go ahead and save that. Uh, we go to restart. And now, if you do use localhost, you refresh. Uh, see what happens here. Well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I moved my. Yeah, thank you. So the restart didn't take place. Perfect. So now localhost is, is the default one, the one that we defined. And then these, whoops, not this one. But these ones still work as, as expected. Yep. So it's the it's same principle. Uh, basically, the very first definition uh, is, is going to, uh, to be the default. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, so the first one is, is the default. Now the great thing about virtual hosts here is that you know you can provide additional uh, parameters. Let's say the proxy system that, that 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 I mentioned before. You can you can proxy on different virtual hosts. So depending on what it is that's request, requested, you can respond with a different website that way. Um, Virtual host is a container directive, uh, and, and uh, you can manipulate a number of things inside of it. You can provide custom configuration for, um, for the behavior. So that's how the hosting companies work, and basically that's how um, they can delegate a certain amount of configuration to you. But the bottom line is that the reason why this works is because under user uh, and group, I specifically have nobody, but this nobody has to have access to the directories that I that I defined. Uh, plus, as Nopix user, I'm starting the server, so I'm excuse me, excuse me giving access here. So, so this is this is the security flaw in shared systems that this user now has access to both accounts. 
and uh, you know that, that's a real risk. I would say that for for your personal use or for you know small websites that definitely don't take credit card numbers, you know that um, that that's still okay, uh, and and you really can't beat the price, you know five dollars a month. So all right, good deal, good deal. So um, so that's. That's that's virtual host, and and uh, a common mistake is to forget to un uncommon the the name virtual host. You can you know you can have all the other configuration, but it's skipped until until that's done. All right, great. So what we have uh, for the rest of today is is uh, is the test. But also, if you would like to start up the lab and 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 you have questions, you want to play with it, that's fine as well. Uh, with the tests, I want to give you plenty of time. So again. If you if you would like to um, read up on the book, um, and and so we can be more flexible with the tests. In fact, let me um, let me stop this first.